Robert, uh, I'm sure you saw today there's some, some legislatures in your, in your legislators in your home state that think very highly of you and, and think you uh, should be hired by the Lions. Uh, did you see that? What did you think of it? I'll, I'll, uh, to be completely honest, I, I didn't see anything in, or hear anything until uh, coming off the practice field. So um, I'm not, I, I don't know what to make of it or anything like that. So it's just whatever, I guess, you know. <laughs> These, uh, this Buffalo Bills team is, uh, they're very, very, very talented. Uh, when you look at Stephon Diggs and Beasley and uh, their backs are very talented and then the quarterback is just a, uh, he is a problem. Uh, it, he was, he is much more than I was expecting when I flipped on the tape. Uh, and it's, it is a tremendous challenge uh, leading up to Monday night. And uh, I, I think Brian has done a fun, phenomenal job with what they've done to their scheme and the way he's evolved it and made it work for the quarterback. So. Um, we've got our hands full. It's, uh, it's going to be a tremendous challenge. Probably one of the better challenges we've had all year. Hey, uh, Robert, just wanted to get your thoughts on Richard Sherman. Um, did he look the same, better, you know, um, than you expected? Did you expect him to be uh, on Sunday? I always expect Sherm, uh, re uh, expect Sherm to have, you know, he, he had a big pep in his step. You know, he was excited to get back out there. Uh, but uh, Sherm, for, for his whole entire career, has always won with mind over, over athleticism. Not to say that he's not an athlete or anything, but uh, he has always played the mental part of the game, and that's why he's able to have that longevity. He is so far ahead of everybody with regards to scheme, technique, uh, how to play certain things. And, um, and you know, the great ones always find the ball, uh, whether they're in man coverage, zone coverage, it doesn't matter. They just find the ball, and uh, there's a reason why he's, he has 40 interceptions in his career. He just... Uh, you can try throwing his way. Uh, you just never know where he's not. You, you just never know when he's going to be somewhere where he's not supposed to. And uh, uh, and that's that's from his film study and all the different thing, all the different work he puts into it. Robert, I can't remember exactly when your name started to be connected with with head coaching jobs last year, but it didn't seem like it was this early. Um, certainly, no letter from legislators at, on December four. How do you sort of reconcile that? How do you compartmentalize um, perhaps a, a, a head coaching opportunity with five weeks left in, in an NFL season? You don't. Um, this week is th this league is so week to week, and the most important week right now is Monday Night Football against Buffalo, and uh, we've got a team that's in the middle of the playoff hunt, so it's it's really a uh, a non-issue for me. I, I don't talk about it. I don't. I don't really even see it. I don't have social media. I don't look into the news, so it's uh, uh, it's probably more for family and friends to to enjoy and get a kick out of than it is for me. I'm just we're completely locked into to Buffalo. Now, for sure, um, there is fine line uh, where uh, you never want to make you never want players to be robots. Um, the one example I'll give was Sherm, Richard Sherman was in man coverage on his interception, but he has the wherewithal and he felt and he was in such good position and he knew what route he was getting that he was able to play with vision, which is a very very hard thing to do in man coverage uh, to to be able to play with vision back to the quarterback. And so he knew the route, he knew the play, so he was able to stay disciplined. Now, at that point. You did your job, and it's time to not become a robot, and to do more than what the coach is asking you to do, or what the play is supposed to is asking you to do. And so he had whipped the uh, quarterback over through the through the seven cut, and he intercepts it. To Javon, um, right now it's uh, I'm I'm a little hesitant to trust his uh, the instincts part, but he's proving over and over and over again that he's right. So New Orleans. Uh, 
disrupting a screen. Uh, he's getting his hands on balls uh, uh, on, at the D-line level. Um, at, he, he bounced off, and, you know, he's, he, we do got to press him. We don't want him being in a, a low plugger in a pass rush situation ever. But there's just certain things the kid feels, and he doesn't know why he's feeling it. He just ends up in a spot, and more often than not, he's right. And um, I'm not going to say that we're encouraging it from him. We're trying to figure out exactly what he's seeing, and he's building trust. But uh, but it, it is we always challenge those guys to do more than what the play of the the play is asking you to do. And and if they feel something, they feel something. And it'll be hard for them to articulate. But great ones have a a, a different type of feel to the game and understanding. And uh, and he's. He's got to continue proving it to us, but right now we want him to go vertical and go get the quarterback. Robert, uh, during the broadcast on Sunday, Dave said that in speaking to you, you told them that you thought Jimmy Ward was one of the best uh, cover guys in, in the entire league. What, what makes you say that? What is it about his skill set um, that makes him so good? And, and if he did have to play the slot, would, would you feel comfortable just given that um, it's been so long since, since he has done that on a from a man coverage ability, uh, so playing the slot, there's so much more involved in playing the slot than just man coverage. There's a zone instincts and feel. Uh, Jimmy's got all those instincts and feels, but to, to just throw him in there without having uh, uh, exhausted a lot of or uh, spent a lot of reps or used up a lot of reps for him to get more feel would be irresponsible to him. Uh, just to, it'd, it'd be a waste of his athleticism and, and all the things that he can do. Uh, but from a man coverage standpoint, and, uh, and it's why he doesn't get a lot of plays. It's why he doesn't get a lot of stats. I mean, the guy absolutely eliminates whoever he, he has in man coverage. Um, if, if you just go back through the history of, of him playing all his man coverage reps, he, he doesn't get action because people are gone. It's done. His, his press coverage skills are unbelievable. His off catch technique is unbelievable. His foot speed is unbelievable. So it doesn't matter. Tight ends, jitterbugs, big receivers, he handles all of them. And, uh, and so he is a, he's been a victim of his dominance because people see splash plays, people see stats, people who are really in tune to the game or who are, are casual fans don't see the dominance he displays in man coverage when he gets those ops. And, uh, and so for, for us, I mean, it's, he's basically having, it's like having dime on the football field without ever having to go dime. And now that he's in the box more often, it just disguises that, that dime a little bit more. So. Uh, being able to shift in and out of man coverage, having him on the field. So uh, because he does have zone coverage skills and he can play a half and he can play quarters and he can play a bus technique and he can play a hook. I mean, he does everything. And um, he is he is the ultimate utility knife. And he's not one of those guys who just does a couple things good. A jack of all trades, he dominates at everything he does. And uh, and because of that, he is he, he's unique. He's, he's rewritten the book for us on what we want out of a safety moving forward. Um, you know, there's a, uh, you do, there, there's, there's a balance um, of, of trying to do enough to make sure that offensive coordinators just can't tee off on you. Uh, you still have to mix it up, but there's also a, uh, a line that's drawn with players in terms of allowing them to play as fast as humanly possible, where everybody on the football field knows exactly what everyone is responsible for. Um, when we get to the sideline, it is they know exactly what happened, they know exactly what needs to be done, and they know exactly who is responsible for whatever would have happened on that play. And so um, we spend uh, so much time talking about offense because our scheme is, is, is uh, uh, not simple, but because our scheme is so honed in and those players are so locked into what we're asking of them, uh, Fred, Sherm, uh, Eric at all three levels, uh, Jimmy Ward, they're, they're so tuned in and they, they spend so much time watching the offense and putting themselves in the calls that they know we're calling. They already know the game plan before we ever give it to them. Now there's little nuances that we do to try to change things up to make sure that offenses are always off tilt. Um, but for those guys, they're, they're watching offense and that's, that's when you become your most dominant is when you can sit, uh, when you can break a huddle you set the close call, you put your feet in the ground, and you survey the offense. 
when players know what's happening to them, it just makes them more explosive. It makes them, you, you unlock all their God-given ability. And these guys, uh, credit to the players, I mean, they, they, they're completely bought in and they just study their tails off. And by the time Wednesday comes, I mean, it, you can throw anything. They, they surprise me every week. We throw whatever we want at them. And it's, they catch it in a hurry and they are talking about indicators, offensive formations, uh, and the communication that happens on our side of the ball and uh, for, from a defensive standpoint is just, it's, it's remarkable with, with, with the group that we have. It, it's a difficult move in the sense, uh, you know, he's been training in there. We've been giving him some reps. Obviously, a majority of his reps have been corner, but, uh, um, you know, it's there's a a different sense of urgency that happens in the slot. And he's 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 uh, he is uh, very aware and he knows exactly what he needs to get done. And so we've been able to work him. Uh, we're very comfortable with Mosley in there. Uh, and the it's it's just getting a little bit of reps re re kind of acquainting yourself with it with, with the uh, with the uh, position and understanding exactly what it's being what's being asked of you it's drill work uh, the ball out break stuff the little things that uh, he can clean up that are completely controllable from his spot now when it gets to man coverage and zone coverage like Mosley Mosley has proven time and time again that he's a reliable uh, player who can win more often than not and so uh, we're very comfortable with Mosley in there against whoever happens to be the slot and Beasley obviously he is a uh, extremely talented receiver has been for a while, and so it is a challenge. But uh, Mosley is 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 awesome. So he's he's been putting in the work, and there's no doubt he's going to pick up where uh, Jamar left off. Um, it obviously it means a lot. I, I love Sherm. We've we've had a long history together, but uh, um, you know I'm I'm always going to deflect. I mean it, it still comes back to them and and the and the stuff they do. Sherm is uh, he's one of the greatest teammates uh, this league has had, uh, and I'm talking league wherever he's been. He's one of the better teammates. Um, he he's one of the better communicators. He is a tremendous supporter uh, of. All of everybody of the organization, uh, communities, you name it. Uh, he's one of the, the one of the greater individuals I've ever been around, and um, and it's not just on the field; it's off the field. So it, it means a ton. It means a ton. But it just goes to the character of the men that are in this locker room and the, and and the leadership that he provides, and the support he gives everybody in the organization. He is he is definitely a a servant leader in that regard, uh, which is the ultimate form of leadership. So. Couple more guys. Robert, how did Kenny Gibbons perform in his first career start, and what kind of potential does he have? Uh, just, just like everyone. I mean, I thought Kevin did a great job. You know, he's he is explosive off the line of scrimmage. Um, when he's attacking and getting vertical and using uh, and penetrating and on the move, uh, we had him on the move a little bit. Uh, he's he's hard to deal with. His pass rush ability is is uh, uh, improving. His feel for run pass diagno uh, diagnos diagnosis on first and second down is improving. Um, his strain, that's always the biggest part with D-line. How much can you strain? How much can you finish? How much can you run? Uh, all of that is coming into fruition for him. And so he, there's a growth process for him, but he, he's got something to him. He's got a uh, 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 tremendous lower body strength. He's got a good head on his shoulders. It's important to him. And, and he is starting to understand all the things that truly make a D-line. And, and it starts with strain and, and, and fight. And, uh, and he's... he's he, He's got a chance. He's got a chance to be special. It's just a matter of how much how much more work he's willing to put in. So. Hey Robert, in, in what ways has this sort of abrupt relocation altered your day to day as a coach, and what's been your impression of, of the new setup down there? So setup wise, I, I think uh, you know I want I gotta give credit to our ops guys. I, it is they they've really done everything they could to make this as comfortable and as. Uh, uh, as it as it possibly can be, I can't imagine it being a better setup. 
Um, and then when you get to the schedule, Kyle, John, and, and uh, their guys, Cray and, and uh, P. Diddy, they've done – phenomenal job in terms of scheduling to make it as seamless as possible so it still feels like a Wednesday it still feels like a Thursday uh, the travel over to and from the field is is seamless um, uh, I can't imagine it uh, from a logistics standpoint being any better than what's been set up here so uh, the guys are upbeat we had a uh, two unbelievable days of practice and so uh, guys are people are in a good spot and so we just got to go out and continue to compete and uh, find a way to get better every day. No, uh, um, you know, anytime you're standing around a pile and the play's still moving, anything happens. Uh, I don't know if we ever thought it was late from a, from a coaching standpoint, but it is one thing. You always want to keep your, hot, your, your feet hot in a, uh, in a pile, um, and uh, it, it's so unfortunate. It's so unfortunate what happened to him because uh, Jamar, there isn't a day that went by where Jamar didn't surprise all of not surprise, but prove that he was capable of, of doing anything we've asked of him. And uh, he took every rep in training camp when KK was hurt. He came back, um, was scared to play him. To, I'm not going to lie to you, I was scared to play him in man-to-man -man coverage versus cup the first week uh, that he played. And he did an unbelievable job on him. And so he proved that wrong, proved he could do that. And, um, you know, he's uh, he is a special young man. And, uh, and, and, and it really, really hurts that what it hurts what happened to him. Uh, but. But no, to, to answer your question, I uh, d uh, didn't think anything, any, didn't take any issue from what happened. It's just, it's a dirty pile, usually happens. Last one. Yeah, he's uh, he's a, he's like a young Cam Newton. Uh, I mean, obviously Cam can still throw and still do all that stuff, but I mean, he is he's a load to tackle. Um, they run him. They, I mean, it's basically like Wildcat offense. You know, they're doing a lot of the uh, they just snap the ball, run power with them, and um, which is surprising. You know, uh, more guts than I would with with a franchise quarterback, but I mean, he makes it work. I mean, he's. Uh, he drops back to pass. He has tremendous pocket presence, um, and uh, he'll sit in the pocket. It's not like he's looking to run out of there. He will go through his progressions. When it's time to scramble, he's not scrambling to run. He's scrambling to throw. Uh, but if it all breaks down, he'll still run, um, and he gains ground in a hurry. He's extremely fast, very agile, very, mo uh, very mobile. Uh, he is hard to bring down because he's such a bigger body. Um, but uh, but he is he is talented. He can throw the ball on his back foot just as far as Mahomes, I bet. And um, and he's got the receivers to throw to. So an extremely talented group. And like I said, the, uh, Brian's doing a phenomenal job putting them in position to be successful. Make sure you subscribe, faithful. <laughs>